Well, welcome to my studio. I've got this 16 by 20 inch painting that I did down on the Puyallup River back in the studio. And I want to do just a little bit of touch up. So I thought for this episode, I could walk you through how I do that. In general, I like how the painting came out. I like the composition, but I think there are just a couple things that I could do to really clean it up and finish it off. I like the softness and the blueness of the background. I think that pushes that background hill of trees nicely. I think it could be a little bluer, especially here. This green is jumping out as a little bit dark and a little bit rich. I think also that I need some separation from this row of trees and this row of trees. I like how I've got some variation in the types of trees and the number of trees in this row. Whereas this one, I've I've done it again. I've got that one, two, three, four, five fence pattern. So I need to break that up a bit. I tried to do that, but still as you're painting and as the light is changing, for some reason, my brain just wants to create some kind of pattern. So what I want to do is maybe bring this group all into one bump up this one so this is a distinct shape, different height from this group, and then maybe bump up the brightness, keep this one small and bump up the brightness a bit. I like this red as well, these red notes that are popping. I, I'm gonna mix up a little more of that and add some more of those red highlights. I'll oil in the painting to begin with, with just a little bit of a, a scumble. So a scumble is a opaque diluted layer that you put down on your dry painting to shift a value or to blur edges, soften edges. So I think for the very far background I'll do a blue scumble just using Neo McGilp, the same medium I was using the day I created this painting. I created this painting back in November. It's now mid-January so it's pretty much dry. I'll do a, a reddish lavender scumble through this middle section, maybe a little more red here and a little more blue over here to separate it from this foreground clump of trees. And I also want to flatten out this river bank. In reality the river was kind of slanting down like this, but it it's not really pleasing looking at the painting with this dark brown band. So I'm going to flatten it out. I'm going to raise the river just a little bit and take up some of that brown. I want to mix up a little more of this light gray and add more patchy lights through here and also on this middle sandy gravelly bar and maybe also in the foreground here. So I don't want to repaint the whole thing. I don't want to redo the color scheme. I like the color combinations. I'm going to use the painting as my color reference. I'm not going to use my reference photos for color reference. When I get back from a painting trip, if I've saved the colors, if I like the colors that I mixed and saved them on my palette, it'll look something like this. This isn't from the Puyallup River plein air painting that I'm working on now. This is from a plein air painting that I did yesterday out in the snow, so there's lots of light, high value snow colors in the scene and some pine colors. So what I'll do is scrape these off into a little plastic container and put them in the freezer until I'm ready to finish the plein air painting. Okay. Here's the little plastic container with my Puyallup River plein air paints that I saved. This is just a frog tape container. I bought some of this frog tape at Lowe's a while back for some house painting, painting a wall in the house and I thought this container would be great for saving colors in the freezer. It's thin, it's hard plastic so it's gonna protect the, the paint if it gets bumped around or sat on in the freezer. So here are the colors that I saved from that painting session. I just gently, lightly spray a little bit of Gamsol on the paint once it's on this 
um, plastic lid and then throw it in the freezer and that keeps it pretty moist, pretty usable for a couple months at least, maybe longer. These lighter colors uh, will, will stay a long time in the freezer. So I'll take these, put them out on my larger palette here in the studio and match them against the colors I'm seeing in the painting. First thing I'll do is take this nice round, it doesn't have any sharp corners, round palette knife, and just gently scrape down the painting. I want to knock off any dirt, any tall ridges, thick ridges of paint. If I'm going to paint over it, I don't want there to be any real strong ridges of paint. So I just gently scrape it down. It also works to do this lightly if you're on canvas. This is a linen panel so it, it scrapes easily. While the paint is still wet if you gently scrape off that top, top layer of paint that works as well. So if you do want to retouch it you have a nice flat surface that takes the paint nicely. If there are a lot of thick ridges of paint and then you paint over that. Sometimes that can create a neat effect, but often it'll just create ridges in the paint that don't quite match the stroke you're putting down, and they can catch the light in funny ways. I've got the same colors laid out that I used that day. Plain air, I may have a few more colors, I can't quite remember. I'll check the video and I'll make sure I use the same colors that I used that day. I've got Neil McGilp here, so I'm going to mix up just a little bit of a scumble. So for that background hill with the trees, I'll use cerulean blue and a touch of ultramarine blue. Now cerulean blue is opaque, so it'll make this a scumble. As far as I know, and as far as I use the terms, a scumble is when you do a glaze with an opaque color. So if you add white or an opaque color like cerulean blue or any of these yellows or reds or a burnt sienna, something that does not become clear as you dilute it but stays kind of milky, then it's a scumble. But if you use a transparent color like ultramarine blue or, or umber or alizarin crimson, something transparent that becomes clear as you dilute it, then that's more of a glaze. I'm gonna add just a touch of white, titanium white to this as well. Maybe just a little touch of alizarin crimson to warm it up. And then I'll add more alizarin crimson and create another pile. More of a reddish purple. I'll take a large green flat. Rinse it out with some Gamsol. This is a number eight rosemary evergreen long flat. Take a little bit of this Neil McGilp. It's, it's loaded now with Gamsol and Neil McGilp. I'll take a little bit of this bluey scumble. Now you wouldn't want to do this if your painting was still wet at all because that much Gamsol will dissolve some of the paint that you have down and, and it'll make everything bleed. So now I'll just see how that looks. Looks like it needs to be a little bit lighter so I'll add just a touch of white.
a little bit lighter, more white. You see how immediately it pushes those trees back. Really nice effect. And it's also oiling in the painting, so it's adding back some medium to give me a nice surface to paint on. Now I will go a little bit darker blue and add some of that same color into the background over here. Now as I come this way, I want to add alizarin crimson this, from this alizarin crimson pile. So I'm not cleaning out the brush, I'm just using the same brush. It still has some of that blue in there. And I'm going to see how this looks. It needs to be lighter, so add more white, a touch of blue. Yeah, that's, that's reminding me of that morning. How it was kind of a gradient from blue to red, back to blue. I really liked how these oranges, the fall colors, were peeking out of this purple haze, blue haze. Now as I come across, I'll add more blue. A little bit lighter. I want to add just a bit of this here as well to push that into the little stream back further. I can add this into some of the area behind these foreground trees to unify things a bit. And I think I want to add it along this bank as well. Now I'll clean my brush out. Clean my brush out with Gamsol and get rid of most of that Gamsol on a paper towel and go into the Neil McGilp with this cleaned brush and just re-wet the rest of the panel. It's okay if I drag a little bit of that scumble that I put down as I do this, but for the most part I want it to be clean. And this is just oiling in, adding a little bit of medium into the other paint area so I can paint on top. I think I want to add a little bit of a more yellow scumble just with straight Gamblin Radiant Lemon, maybe a touch of yellow ochre. Suggest more light on this bank. Now I'll take a clean piece of t-shirt cloth and just wipe this down and get rid of the excess medium. This is a place where you can play as well. You can, you can wipe away that scumble and get some neat effects. The longer you wait to do this, the more that scumble is going to set up and it'll be harder to remove. So if you don't like what you are seeing, what you did, wipe it away quickly and try it again with maybe a little darker, a little lighter, a little more diluted scumble. It's, it's a great way to unify a painting that seems to be disjointed.
and it's a great way to add atmosphere like smoke or mist or early morning light. I'm not wiping hard. I'm not picking that all back off. I want to leave a nice wet layer on there to soak in and make the painting surface nice to paint on. Okay, I'm liking what I'm seeing there. Now I'll get my colors back out and rematch. I'll rematch the colors based on this new harmonized scene. Quick rundown on my palette. I've got little Neil McGilp here. Lead white, titanium white, and I just set out several piles so that I have some clean paint to dip in or to pull from. Cold gray, ivory black, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, thalo blue, ultramarine blue, sap green, burnt umber, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, cad red, cad yellow, Windsor lemon, gamblin radiant lemon, yellow ochre, and then these are just some colors left over from my last painting. They're all mixed from these same colors, so I don't mind pulling them in and using them to mix color for my current painting, as long as they're not drying out or becoming uh, tacky or too muddy. Then here are the colors that I, I had left over from the painting, the plein air painting, and then also some additional colors that I mixed. In general, I have the background and darker going to the foreground and lighter with some exceptions like this is a foreground these are foreground darks but they're the darkest things in the scene so I've, I've put them toward the blue end and toward the darker end of the values I've got my values laid out roughly along this value scale and then chromatically from blues to yellows so I've got a few sky colors the background hill colors the background pine colors, the background deciduous fall colors, the foreground deciduous fall colors, uh, the foreground pines, the water, and the gravel, and some of the white water. Then these are just a few special colors for the water. There's an electric blue in the water that I want to capture, so I mixed up some high chroma high value water, blue and green and really vibrant emerald green. I mixed up more than I, I'll need for sure, um, but whatever's left over I can just set aside and use in the next painting. All right, let's start with this number seven, Rosemary Evergreen. And just add some fresh paint to the sky Try to firm up the little bit of cloud pattern that I have, and then also give me a nice soft edge to paint into for the trees. I can darken that with just a little bit of ultramarine and use that for the water as well. The sun's over here, so the sky over here should be darker. There should be a nice gradient coming across the sky toward the sun. So here I'm not painting thick, I'm just dragging a very thin layer of paint across what's already on the panel. So I leave my reference points, but I want to give just a thin layer of paint and shift the the colors and maybe clean up the colors a little bit here and there to add interest. So I know I'm going to paint orange fall color leaves back into this so I want a little pure blue right where the leaves are going to go because I know the orange against the leaves will resonate, will vibrate nicely. Now I'll use that same brush and paint the background trees paint back into that fresh paint I just put down. The more abstract and soft and high value I can keep that background the better. It's going to keep it back, it's going to 
add a level of abstraction that should be interesting in the final painting. As I come forward, I'll introduce darker shadows, I'll introduce higher chroma in the trees. That'll pop those foreground, middle ground and foreground trees in front of that misty, hazy, blue and lavender background. I'm introducing just hints of green in there to suggest some of the pine trees that are coming closer, but I really want that overall misty morning look to remain in the painting. So that means soft edge is almost everywhere. I'll use those same colors and paint the background reflection in the water as well. I'll paint it a little bit darker and warmer. So it may seem like I'm totally repainting the plain air, which in my opinion is just fine if that's something I want to do. If it was a competition where the rules said you had you have to do it all plain air, then I would do it all plain air, but this is just a painting for my own benefit, for my practice and I'm trying to make something beautiful out of it. So if someone gives you a hard time about painting over your plain air, uh, don't, you don't have to listen to them. It all depends on what you want to get out of the, the plain air painting. I like to save some of my plain air paintings as they were finished in the field, just because I, I like them and they captured a unique color note. Some like this one, I don't mind reworking as much as needed to, to make a better painting. Feel free to use footage from my videos to create your own art. Just tag me if you post it online, I'd like to see it. Now I'll take this number four, Rosemary Master Long Flat. It's a little softer natural hair brush. And start to paint these middle ground deciduous, fall colored deciduous trees. So I'm going to use the next layer of chroma and deeper color. Get a little richer, a little darker as I come forward. Start with the lights. So I've got this light tan gray that I matched to the painting where the light was hitting those deciduous trees. I like these Master Series brushes because they give a kind of random brush stroke and they leave paint on top of wet paint so you can paint a la prima wet into wet. I don't want any trees exactly the same shape. I don't want real regular placement. I'm not going by the reference photo here, I'm going by what I had in the plein air painting, but I want to correct some of those shapes that I had in there and get rid of some of those patterns. Use a little smaller evergreen flat, it's a number two. Start with these higher value colors. Here I'm just playing, what if I introduced a little bit of light on this middle bank of gravel, suggesting the sun coming through these trees. I remember that being really pretty that day. And I'm just playing with color temperature a little bit as well, shifting it warmer and cooler. And 
and I also wanted to try putting some light on this foreground and spots as well. It doesn't have to be detailed. The eye will, the mind of the viewer will fill in all kinds of detail if your values are correct. And I'm freely just dipping into all the different premix colors. Again, as long as my value is roughly correct, then color doesn't matter too much. Okay, I took a step back, I had a cup of coffee, and I'm looking at it again, and I like what I'm seeing, I like how it's softened up, and it's got that distance now. It really needs the foreground filled in, so now that this is, the background's in, it's set up just a little bit, I'll go in with the foreground. Here I'll take my palette knife and just thinly mark in a, a few of these tree trunks. Alright, now I'll go back in with this Master Series number four. I'll dip it in a little bit of gam salt to begin with. It's a clean brush. I cleaned it at the end of my last session. And I'll go in with the highest chroma fall colors. I'll go with this lightest value first and then work darker from there. I'm not trying to paint leaves, I'm just trying to paint colored, colorful shapes. Just a little bit of palette knife for the foliage adds some interesting abstract shapes. You can also take away paint if there's an area that you don't quite like. Re-expose the, the paint underneath. I'll take another clean evergreen long flat. This is a number five and repaint the river. I'll start with this high value pink for the white water. Shift it slightly more lavender as it recedes. And then even a little bluer as it recedes further. Here's where I am now. I've got the middle ground and the river repainted river has a higher bank now. Now I'll go in and paint these foreground trees back in. I want to keep it loose just like I had with the plain air. I like that effect. This large evergreen, number seven, and add just a little more color, a little more paint to the sky so that I can paint into it with those foreground trees create a little bit of a soft edge. I think I also want to change the shape of this hill. It's it's bugging me. It's just a little too round, a little too odd. And you've probably noticed that from the beginning and thought, what am I going to do with that weird shaped little clump of trees? I should have done something sooner, but 
it's just it is accurate to what was there but it's not working for the painting so I want to make it a little more just of a straight hill and see if that works for the composition better I'm going to go ahead and check the the reflection as well it seems like I could fill in a little more blue sky here so I'll go with the darkest blue, add just a touch of ultramarine. Now I'll go back in with this clean number five rosemary and reestablish some of those background trees. That's why it's so nice to save your colors and keep them arranged so you can find them. That way you can make these changes, you can try things, make corrections pretty easily on the fly. Without remixing a bunch of color and without destroying some harmony that you found. I'll take this number four evergreen extra long flat and paint these foreground trees now that I have a little bit of wet paint in there to paint into. I think I'll start with the trunks. So I'll use this darkest reddish color first and just drop in. I can still kind of see where they were before. So I'll just kind of roughly follow that. Maybe I'll start at the bottom and then go up. These extra long flats are nice for drawing because they are flexible being extra long and being an evergreen they, they form a nice tight tip like a blade edge that you can draw with. You can also go flat and get a thicker stroke. I find if I start at the bottom and then go up it's easier to to thin out the the trunk as it goes up. Now back to this number five extra long flat for use. We'll start with the lightest light. see this is looking like chaos which is okay uh, you know what a forest a bank of trees is pretty chaotic and it's okay to pile on the paint and play with it and just see where it goes I don't like how bulky this is someone just took a knife and scraped some of it back open up the sky again Well, here's where it ended up. I tried to leave it as close to the plein air as possible. I tried not to take it into a completely different painting. Pretty happy with the result. There's a lot more, I think, that could be done with this scene. 
I'm not quite satisfied with the composition. I don't think this gravel bar here reads quite as effectively as it could. I tried adding more light, taking light away, and this is kind of where I, I landed. I think a little more graphic shape would help instead of just that arrow shape. Um, I, I do like adding some light to the foreground. I think that adds interest. I think the most effective part is probably this pool of water and the reflection of the fall color trees in the water. I find that really convincing and, and pretty nice to look at. The background is also nice to look at. It leaves a lot to the imagination, which I like. The side trees here, I think, are a bit distracting. I tried to keep those as loose and abstract, as few hard edges as possible to keep them from drawing attention, but they still draw quite a bit of attention. I tried going a little darker, a little lighter, and this is where I ended up without completely redoing the, the composition of the painting. So I think in the future, I would try maybe also making that clump of trees simpler, more graphic, maybe one or two trunks with more graphic and expressive limbs, a little more clumped together, simplified foliage might be interesting. I could also bump this out into the scene a little bit more and make that foreground clump of trees more of the center of interest. Right now this is trying to be the center of interest, but it's a little bit simplistic and so it it doesn't hold the attention very well. So I accomplished what I wanted to in the painting, which was to get out and do a little larger multi-day painting. I learned a lot in the process, really discovered some beautiful light harmonies. I think the most beautiful passage is the river where it is a really subtle lavender in the shadow, shifting from a warmer, redder lavender to a cooler, bluer lavender. And then where the sun hits the water, it turns into that, that beautiful light yellow, very high value green. I'll see you in the next one. If you'd like to support the channel, please visit my website. I sell these little plain air pieces at a reasonable price because I consider them practice. It really makes me happy when someone likes my art enough that they want to hang it in their home. You can also sign up for my newsletter and stay up to date on my new work and shows and get a discount on original art and prints.